And then that brings us, um, of course, into uh, just a little over a year old now at this point, um, Omega, which was the, the eighth record. And, yes. uh, and I should have told you, I, I, like, I like to go easy on folks by not doing live records and acoustic records. And mm -hmm. Like that or else, you know. Yeah, we would uh, spend a couple more hours. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I, I wouldn't mind, but it would get very long. <laughs> <laughs> it gets unwheel. It's it's uh, and it's all and it's already very generous to spend this much time doing the whole discography. I don't want to overtax people. Um, but uh, yeah, going into this, uh, obviously the pandemic, you know, changes everyone's release schedule and recording schedule mm -hmm. and, and things like that around that time. Um, yeah. But uh, going into Omega, what were some of the conversations uh, within the band about um, what you wanted to accomplish and and how it would uh, you know fit into the catalog and and all of that mm -hmm. sort of thing? Obviously, there's the Kingdom of Heaven Part Three that mm -hmm. happens on there, and, and Rivers, as you mentioned a moment ago, is on that record, and uh, yeah, just another. I mean, it's another great, amazing addition. To the catalog what can you tell me about the, the mindset at that time uh we were well rested we were uh, we just had like a sabbatical we wrote our biography the essence of epica mm -hmm. which is a little bit what i'm doing with you right now but then in yes. an hour <laughs> <laughs> and um after the holographic principle you know and, and after we finished the the tour for the holographic principle we then pulled the plug of live shows and uh, the, the, the biography. Um, and one thing that we felt with, with the holographic principle is that we wanted to get back to more an organic sound, be sound more like a band that actually sounds like they're rehearsing in a basement, which of course we weren't, but in our extremely busy schedules, uh, we didn't have time to get together because we want to spend time with our family and friends. And um, so we rented a house. Everybody in the band wrote songs at home. And then we got together in this cute little cottage uh, in the middle of nowhere in Holland. Everybody set up their home studio and Yoast, the producer, was there. And we were writing, working on the songs in the same house. Like there was music coming from all corners of the house. And we had a direct interaction with each other and could make extremely quick adjustments and uh, that that's why omega sounds so complete i guess and with the holographic principle here and there I, I didn't get that feeling somehow because the album was a little bit was conceived digitally also with the also with requiem and um with omega it was it was a nice experience, you know, after spending so many years together to actually, you know, have found the motivation and the energy to create another album um, without putting that enormous pressure on yourself. Like the time frame, up until finishing the holographic principle, we always had this two year yeah. uh, time frame writing, recording an album and touring at the same time, every two years doing that again, until we were kind of burned out. Um, and, and with Omega, it was, everything kind of fell into the right place, you know? Um, we even beat the pandemic. I mean, the only thing we, we did, couldn't finish recording were the vocals, but we found a solution for that. And that did not uh, take away any quality of the album. Um, and Omega is one of my favorite albums. I love to listen to it, and I'm really happy with all the songs on the album. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we had the problem like uh, with the world's upside down. Art is suddenly not a priority anymore <laughs> to uh, you know the bigger bosses in the world. I guess football soccer games were allowed to take place but no concerts you know no money yeah. to be made there for poor musicians but epica was resourceful and we came up with omega alive which was a huge success and i'm very happy that despite the situation we got to create something like that you know if we were in the normal the old normal we would just go on tour again 
and we would have maybe one CD presentation show. That's how we normally would do it. But because of the situation, we were able to create something magical like Oh My God Alive, which also was very pivotal for the development of the band. You know, that gave us the visual like, okay, this is how we can present the show. And we want to do it also for when the world starts or opening up again so we can actually tour and, and bring all the beautiful visual elements that we created for Omega and bring them on the road. So yeah, Omega's album number eight. And if you put eight on the side, it's the infinity symbol. So it's, it's a very spiritual album, lyric wise. Um, yeah, and it's the newest release up until today, because tomorrow we have an EP coming uh, your way. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I have only fond memories of, of Omega. I mean, I, I don't want to sound negative, like talking about Requiem in the, no, no. talking no. about the, the things that maybe not a lot of fans oh, know. Yes. And yeah, yeah. Same with the holographic principle. I guess a lot of people don't realize what it takes to be in the in the band, and also the 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 how do you say the the knife cuts in two both ways. Yeah. both ways, you know. And the biggest part for me, looking at my 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 career, also that I talked to other singers who are mothers as well. Like the biggest price we pay is being away from our family and friends you know um, that's the price we pay for for success i guess and the sacrifice you have to make but on the other hand being a musician being an artist is like a calling it's not like a job you know so it's a very essential part of who you are and um yeah trying to find the balance in that is a struggle i guess we have every day every working parent has but being uh Musician, parent, touring musician, parent is a whole new level. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it, it is. I'm a parent of two young kids myself and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I don't, I don't tour. And uh, earlier this year, I, I went on tour with a band for about three and a half weeks. And uh, yeah, I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> for all, for I don't know either, but I, I do it. It's wonderful and amazing. They're still, yeah. It's, mm. um, it's funny, the tour manager about uh towards the end of towards the end of the run he goes i think i have you figured out and i said what do you mean and he goes he goes you're good for about two weeks on the road <laughs> he's like he's like next time you want to pop in two weeks <laughs> and i was like yeah yeah so it, it's definitely a um a skill in and of itself to even be able to endure um in the best of situations out there so in my respect for sure um and a great thing about uh one of the reviews uh, was actually in Kerrang! of Omega. Uh, it said, Omega proves that as bombastic as symphonic metal gets, it's no different to any other genre, and that ultimately it's about the songs. And these songs are Epica's best. And yeah, mm. that, for that to be said by Kerrang! on album eight is just, you know, incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do believe, that, you know, with each new release that you put out, that it's like, the best you can do at the time but I, I do really believe that is the best we could do you know 20 years now in our career we learned yeah. from our mistakes and we strive to improve wherever we can and uh, yeah I guess we did with with Omega we we did that dig deeper within ourselves and after you know being on the road so much and, and writing the biography was also a little bit therapeutic you know everything like i said before the two-year time frame it was like a high-speed train epic i just went you know we, we never stopped <laughs> and having uh, having the break writing the album we could re revisit all the things that we went through and so many memories that were hidden you know in the little box in the attic somewhere in, inside my my head and it was also fun to hear how other band members had different uh, memories, you know, or, or different special memories that, you know, came. And as we were all have, talking about it, it was like, oh yeah, that's right, wow. Sometimes it felt, feels like I've lived already two lifetimes, you know, the traveling that we did, the world that we- And starting so young, you know. And starting so young, I can retire in five years. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like 85 sometimes, but- uh, No way. 
no, we just have to maintain the balance uh, so we can add 20 more years to what we have already.